Hi everyone, uh, welcome back to another little painting demo. Um, today I've got a new set of lights here. And for creating videos, I've tried to update all my gear here. I've got a new camera coming, and uh, which I'll do a review about for making videos for painting when it arrives. I've also got myself some studio lights, so I've always got the same type of light to paint in every time I come into the studio. Not so much for just when I'm painting for myself, but when I'm actually painting for uh, for videos. Because every time I come in here, the lighting conditions are slightly different, and then I have to try and set up the camera slightly different, and it's been getting varied results. So today, this is I'm going to do like a, a, a big. I want to have a go using just two brushes, basically. I'm going to use a uh, a Terry Harrison brush, which I know he used to use to paint grass and stuff like that. And I'm also going to use a, I think it's a size 10 sable uh, mix, sorry, brush here. Um, don't know what that is actually, I can't remember to be honest, so I won't say what I think it is. I think it's a mixture of uh, hair. Okay, so I'm just, anyway, I, I'm, I'm not too hung up on brushes really. As long as they, as long as you can get a decent shape on them, um, that's okay. So I'm going to keep my painting quite big. I'm going to start off with a little drawing first. Um, and I'm just going to make it a landscape. Uh, I just want to really practice again. I'm still have a big crashing wave here. A surf coming in. Another rock here with some surf. The horizon about there. Some more rocks here. Nice wave coming in at this point. So basically I'm looking for good strong colours in this painting. Simple palette again because I'm still practicing with my split primary palette and we'll just see what we can what we can make of it. And like I said it's just an exercise it's, it's not anything stressful so it's just uh, you know a bit of fun. So I'm going to start off with a nice mix of cerulean blue for the sky. And what I am going to do, just to keep everything moving a little bit, I'm going to use some spray on the paper just to help keep the wash moving. Not too much, don't want to soak it too much, just uh, enough to, to help it. And I'm just going to put in my sky like so. And I'm not going to do anything else much to it, just going to watch the top of my wave here because I want to keep that white so I want to preserve all my whites here so I'm going to keep some whites about there and go over those I want to add some I want to add some Windsor blue to this mix so I want it, and a little bit of uh, permanent rose just to make it a bit purple I don't want it too blue and there's one, I'll drop some water on there. Have that coming. And a little wave running through there at the back. I'll try and get some broken strokes with my brushes if I can as well. Um, just take the sea back there. And I'll add a little bit of yellow to that. Just to make it a bit greener. So we get some varied colours in the sea. I'm going to make this quite a quick painting today. I've got work this afternoon, so I uh, can't be hanging about. Right, that's okay. So I'm just going to dry off my brush a little bit and just soften some of these edges here where the where the uh, where the wave is coming in. A bit more cerulean blue just under the curl. Just where that wave's curling, I want to put a little bit of green and a little bit of cerulean blue just to show you can see through that wave on the curl. And again, a bit more, a bit darker cerulean blue and green. Make it a really nice, fresh looking colours. 
we've got a rock there and we've got lots of movement here down here lots of swirling of the sea so I want to retain my whites at this point because if I start obliterating my white then we're going to have uh, nothing left to you know create our, our waves with at the end it's going a little bit it's running there a bit that's okay let's just lift that out a bit Just so we can smooth that. It's a bit awkward there. So sometimes when you're painting on a double page spread like this, it can be a bit awkward. But it'll be alright. Right, now we're going to put our waves up. Uh, sorry, our wet rocks in. So now we've got to use these split primary palette to mix some browns. So we're going to use some yellow, some red, and I'm going to pick up a bit of that blue to start put some colour into my rocks first. I don't want to go too dark too soon because I want to keep it a bit more green in it. I'm just going to go a little bit darker now. The reason, I, I don't know why I'm using this brush really, I kind of thought the reason why was because it would help me get the texture on the waves where they're smashing up against the rock. And it is actually, it's working quite well. But I'm, I'm not actually getting the shape of the rocks that I want, that's the only problem with it. So I need to go back to my round brush just to create the shape I want of the rock. I'm just going to mix some lighter colour again, so a bit of yellow, a bit of permanent rose. See how easy it is when you use one of these split primary palettes. Uh, you know, you've only got a few colours to choose from, and it takes so much of the actual stress of painting out of the process. It, you know, it just makes life easier. I'll just pop that little rock in. So if you're outside sketching, this method of painting would lend itself so well to it. And we've got another rock down here. I'll sketch him in a bit more later when that's dry. A bit more brown, so we just move up, mix our yellow on our permanent rose, a yellow and permanent ro rose together with a little touch of blue, and I get a nice brown. But I want all varied colours, so I've got some lovely fresh colours going on here with uh, with this with this palette colours. I really don't need to be, I don't need to have too big a selection. my palette which is seems to be making life a lot easier for me okay so at this stage we need to let that dry and then we'll come back and we'll finish it off but I think for a nice little sketch that's looking quite fresh and if you're sketching outside and the, you've got to remember the seas moving quickly this is the sort of method of painting personally I think is the best because you can just capture the scene so quickly okay I'm just gonna let that dry before I do the next bit Okay, then now that's dry, we can just kind of go back in with this nice little brush. And this is the bristly one I'm using, I'm, I'm experimenting with today. And I'm just going to try and get some bit of texture on the waves. Just going to, got to be careful you don't overuse a brush like this because it can end up looking a bit all too much the same. So you've got to use these things sparingly. And I'm not really keen on the way that's going. It doesn't seem to be give me the effect I wanted. So I'm going to hop back to this brush and try and smooth things out a bit before it dries. There we go. Go. That wave coming in front there, so we can just darken these colours down here, just to try and create some movement 
in what you're painting really that's all you're trying to do now um, it's not just trying to keep the colors keep the colors varied and try and get that movement which is not always easy to do I've struggled some. See, I'm getting going a bit carried away there because I'm actually starting to obliterate all the white, which isn't what I wanted. But anyway, we're getting the idea. Um, right, we want to put a little bit of a uh, little bit of shadowy colour on this wave here at the base where it's coming up, just like that. Just to give a bit, a bit in there. I don't want it. And just a little bit of colour where we've got break, waves breaking behind this wave that's coming in. Quite awkward when you go across a page. It's worth doing because it looks nice in the sketchbook and it makes your sketchbook that little bit more useful because you can do bigger paintings in it. But I just want to break that line up there a little bit. The rock is it's a bit too right. For, all I want to do now is just um, put some final darks on the rocks just to give them a little bit of shape and I'm going to think that's probably going to be it because if I fiddle too much well the whole point of this exercise was to keep the paint you know to produce something that was really fresh and spontaneous and nice and it's a, I find it's a really good practice to do you know you get it's very rewarding I'm just mixing a darker colour I'm struggling here there we go A little bit of reflection off the lights there. Anyway, so check out the links below my video because there's lots of links there to my site, my Udemy course and uh, my website. Feel free to come along and join in. Um, I hope you enjoyed the little very, very quick lesson today, but it's a bit of fun and I just fancy trying out the lights this morning. So uh, leave a comment below and let me know what you thought of the lights and the video quality, if it's improved it at all. Hopefully it's not made it worse. Um, the new camera hasn't arrived yet. That arrives in a couple of days. And as soon as it arrives, I'll be doing a little unboxing thing just for you guys um, to see. And then I'll be using the new camera for my future courses and my future YouTube uh, videos. So thanks ever so much for, for, for watching today. And uh, I hope you come back again soon and watch some more. So thanks again and bye for now.